violence and other kind of violence. What's good, Cyberspace? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. Three-year-old child was one of 15 people injured in a drive-by shooting in Garfield Park. Glenn joins us live from Stroger Hospital with the details. Glenn? 15 people shot up in Garfield pa uh, Park this past Halloween weekend. Um, it's getting spooky out there, y'all. Mass shootings galore. This is indeed a mass shooting. Although most of the time we're not really counting these as mass shootings. They're going unreported. Yet still 14 people were shot. These super gremlins are on demon time. Hey, good morning, guys. Now, police have updated that number to 14 people who were victims of that gun violence and that drive-by shooting that happened last night. But get this, it only took three minutes to turn this group of mourners at that corner into the latest victims of gun violence, with a three-year-old being the youngest victim to that gun violence. Take a look at the scene from last night. Police were there, a large presence of police, I should say, um, were at that corner of Polk in California after a drive-by shooting took place a little before 9.30 last night. Police are telling us a group of people were standing at the corner attending a vigil for someone who died of natural causes. Mm. Police believe two people inside of a dark colored SUV drove by firing shots. That vehicle was then left. So they weren't even at the vigil of somebody who got spun on. It was someone who actually passed away of natural causes. <laughs> and the news made sure to point that out to make it seem like it was an innocent situation, which it could have been. And then it also could have been a whole bunch of um, goons gathered around, posted up. You never know with these things. Last scene headed southbound on California. In total, 14 people were shot with the youngest, a three-year-old boy who was taken here to Dang. Stroger Hospital in serious condition. The three-year-old boy, folks. This is the community. He was hit in both legs. An 11-year-old girl was taken to Mount Sinai in serious condition after she was also shot in the leg. And 11 year old girl. A 13 year old boy is here at Stroger Hospital in serious condition. I think he was shot in both the torso and leg. The oldest victim, a 56 year old woman, was shot in the mm. torso. And another victim was hit by a vehicle while trying to run away from that gunfire. Guys, it doesn't matter. Women, children, the elderly, infants. <sighs> you can get it too, apparently. Police did say their initial investigation doesn't show the victims were the intended targets. There was a vigil that we understand that was being, the balloon release was happening, but the, there may have also been others gathered for other various reasons. It's a very, uh, you know, common corner to be uh, where people congregate. It's an unfortunate situation to find a three-year-old and some young people are being shot in this particular case. Um, you know, it, it's, it's heartbreaking uh, to people go out to, you know, memorialize someone and ultimately become victims. Now, police did say that shooting was caught on camera, but so far no one is in custody. Now, there is a $15,000 cash reward for information that leads to an arrest and conviction. Of course, we'll keep you updated as we receive more information on this shooting. For now, we're live outside of Stroger Hospital in Glen Marshall, WGN News. Glenn. Hey, good morning. Two of those brothers are right here behind me in critical condition at the hospital after being shot in the head and in the back. Now, this happened during a drive-by shooting, and witnesses tell us that they actually had to get their kids in the home before this shooting took place, and one of those bullets actually hit their vehicle. Take a look at the scene from yesterday. Police are telling us the shooting took place near the corner of 76 and Walcott Avenue just before 2 p.m. yesterday afternoon in the Auburn Gresham neighborhood. The three brothers were standing outside of a home when someone started firing shots from a vehicle now the 21 year old is guys chicago is on fire you know um people have tried to you know basically forget about chicago we've been talking about philly new orleans atlanta but nothing has slowed down in chicago as a matter of fact they've sped things up 
since the uh, the Safety Act, aka the Purge Law, and it seems like there's just no type of sense of urgency to end this violence that we see going on in the communities in Chicago. Here at the University of Chicago Hospital in critical condition with a gunshot wound to his head. His 17 year old brother is also here in critical condition after he was shot in the middle of his back. Now their 15 year old brother is listed in good condition at Comer Children's Hospital after he was shot in both of his legs. A neighbor witnessed the shooting, one of the bullets hitting her family's vehicle. She said she heard about 30 gunshots before seeing the victim's mother come out of the home and find her sons fighting for their lives. He collapses to the ground. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, oh my God. So of course, we're all out here screaming and yelling, where's the police? Where's the fire department? Where's the ambulance? No. Well, y'all defunded them. <laughs> this is what you guys voted for. And this is not a funny situation, but you heard what she said. Where's the police? Where's the ambulance? Where's the fire department? Y'all think they just gonna start showing up and they're not. They're gonna, response times are gonna be a lot slower. They're going to start caring less because they're going, they're being stretched to wit's end to stop this violence. And then y'all going to go protest on the back end, talking about they locking up the Kings, but the Kings are out here shooting each other and, you know, leaving people for dead. Don't make no sense. So, of course, we're all out here screaming and yelling, where's the police? Where's the fire department? Where's the ambulance? Nobody's here yet. Okay. She's so distraught. You can see the hurt, the pain. And me being a mother, I hurt because she hurts. Now, so far, no one has been arrested in this shooting, but every year, two detectives are investigating. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, they want you to contact them immediately. For now, we're live outside of the University of Chicago Hospital. Glenn Marshall, WGN News. And all three of those brothers have been working with St. Sabina for more than a decade against gun violence, but yesterday, they became victims of it. So as you can hear, they're activists. These brothers were activists attempting to fight gun violence and then they became a victim themselves. It was numbing. It's a pain far too familiar. As soon as you think that you're getting over something, here come another hit. That once again is hitting close to home. We're a family, we're a village. For the St. Sabina community. Three boys that, that I hold dear, that I would have jumped in front of the bullets for. You know what I mean? That type of love. Three former St. Sabina students, all brothers, two of them teenagers, police say were shot in a drive-by yesterday right in front of their Auburn Gresham home. Mm. A 15-year-old boy police say was struck in both of his legs and expected to survive. A 17-year-old said to be a star high school basketball player was critically hurt after being shot in the back and police say a 21-year-old man was shot in his head, now left fighting for his life. A man who became a youth mentor himself at the church that raised him. In Chicago, for whatever reason, it's like the most. For whatever reason, it's like, I mean, come on, bro. You can't act like you don't have reason upon reason upon reason as to why things are the way that they are in the community. Like, don't act like it's just, oh, for whatever reason, it could be anything, right? Gifted. The more youth that you have really doing something, you know, got great things going, they are the main targets. The shooting comes as St. Sabina is still reeling months after losing another former student. 18-year-old Khalil Whitell was shot and killed in August, days after getting his first job. Mm. Here we go again. Now, how long do we still continue to watch our kids being shot. Then we try our best to protect them. But now with a situation like this is what more can we do? And I spoke about this in a prior stream. Um, <clears throat> the reason why there's a high uh, underemployment rate in Chicago is because as a young black man, like I said, we have an op culture. So these guys can't go get jobs even if they want to work. Um, because their ops are going to slide at their workplace. 
and they're going to be caught lacking, as they call it, and be unarmed. So, very sad situation here. Um, this type of thing is just spiraling out of control and seems like nobody who has a name or a voice or any type of influence in the community is going to speak up and try to put a stop to this. And St. Sabina already stepping up efforts to solve this case with a $15,000 reward for any information leading to I'm here on the corner of MLK and Frederick Douglass where a shooting just took place. And as you can see, it's a pretty rough area. So I'm basically risking my life reporting on this madness. So make sure you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. Like the video, hell, share the video. And make sure you go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section to continue the discussion on how we can find solutions to all this sun violence in the streets. I'm Jen Quavius Jackson, here live, reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, BGZM News 17. Well, tonight a mother and daughter are speaking out about a dear friend shot to death in his own car Saturday while driving for Uber on the south side. WGN's Brona Tumulty is at police headquarters at 35th and Michigan with that story. Good evening, guys. Karan Arterbury was just 36 years old. He had a side hustle going with Uber, and he was hoping to get away from Chicago and start a new life for himself elsewhere, but he never got the chance. We remained friends, and, you know, we were best friends, and um, kind of grew up with them. Sandria Branch and her mother, Tamira Terry, spoke with us today via Zoom from Atlanta, where they've made a new home away from Chicago. You know, he spent holidays and they came to the wrong place. Atlanta is not a good place to run away from black on black crime. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> we are hurting. We're scared. He's with us. He he was a very um very important part of our family. They're talking about a man named Karan Arterbury, Zandria's best friend for many, many years. He made sure that the friendship always was you know, a strong friendship. And no matter how many miles was in between us, you know, nothing could separate the bond that we had built over years. On Saturday, that bond was broken by bullets. He and I a car pulled on the side of them and shot the car up. We're told Karan was driving for Uber and a 24 year old passenger. They were stopped at 80th and South Jeffrey Boulevard when another car pulled up behind them. Police said two people got out of that vehicle and opened fire, mm. killing Karan and wounding his passenger. His sister reached out to me and I spoke with her and she kind of told me like what happened because I didn't know what had happened. And she told me, you know, what was going on. Zandria tells us it's especially heartbreaking because he wanted to leave here as well. And he was thinking about moving to Arizona or to, te Texas. to Texas. His hope of starting a new life ripped from him at a red light. Wow. Um, driving Uber is very dangerous. Any rideshare app. And these rideshare companies are not going to... <laughs> They're not, you, there is no life insurance policy, nothing. It's kind of your contracted worker and whatnot. And they really do distance themselves from you if something bad happens. He really like was like, yo, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get up out of here. Like I'm going to leave. Um, he just never got a chance to. The mother and daughter say it hurts to know that friendly face won't walk through their door again. When he entered into a room, he would always smile. And his smile was just like such a light. And they want to remind all rideshare drivers to be aware of the danger while doing the job. Make sure that you are protecting yourself and safe. Never second guess yourself if there's something questionable. But if it's questionable, just don't take it. Now, nobody is in custody in relation to this. It's not clear if it was a random shooting or if there was potential for the passenger to be involved somehow. If you do have any information that could help police, you're asked to give them a call or submit a tip anonymously at cpdtip.com. We're at 35th in Michigan. Bruno Tumulty, WGN News. Uber did release a statement tonight saying in part, the devastating act of violence that took the life of Mr. Atterbury and injured the... So just a statement. <laughs> ah, it's wild. 
and i'm not saying they have to do anything specifically maybe send his family a postcard um but guys i mean you're out here alone especially in the community you get gunned down nobody's here to pay for your funeral nobody's here to say your life mattered black lives matter it's nothing it's just in words die every day b the writer is heartbreaking our thoughts are with everyone involved we hope the police are able to arrest those responsible and are standing by to assist however we can Gang violence and other kind of violence.